How to make a solar USB charger with a battery backup in an Altoids tin. <clears throat> now there's a lot of examples of these online, um, but there's no there's no tutorial on how to actually make one. So I, I figured out how to make it, and uh, there you go, here's, here's how to make one. So the first thing you want is a solar panel to, to glue on the top. Um, it has to be greater than 9 volts because we're using a 9 volt rechargeable battery as the backup, and you need a solar panel that has uh, a greater voltage than 9 volts so that it'll actually charge it. Now what you want to do, uh, looking inside, you want to uh, cut a hole in the tin, in the basically the lid of the tin, to put uh, the the two the two negative and positive leads out. So then the the first connection you want to make is uh, take the positive lead of the solar panel uh, and connect it to a blocking diode. Now what this will do is maintain a direct current uh, between the battery and the solar panel, so that when the when the device is put in the dark. Uh, obviously the, the charge on the solar panel will be close to nothing because it's it's in the dark and uh, the battery uh, because the the charge on the battery is, is now greater than the charge on your solar panel it'll actually discharge into the solar panel and basically drain the battery so that's not what you want so you put in a blocking diode now make sure that the the black stripe on the diode is facing away from the solar panel because the black stripe shows where the negative end on your diode is so then your next connection is that you want to take the uh, the positive lead on your battery and connect it to the uh, the negative end of your diode, and then you want to um, solder an additional wire to the negative end of your diode, uh, a, an additional positive lead here. So then, on the other end of that lead, what you want to do is connect another diode. <clears throat> now this diode make sure that uh, it, it maintains a direct current between the battery and the um, the battery and the device you're charging because as the rechargeable battery is charging the uh, the device its uh, voltage is decreasing so when it when it reaches a certain threshold um, the, the battery and the device you're charging will actually discharge into the battery basically drain the battery and your device and that's not what you want, so you want to make maintain a direct current between the rechargeable 9 volt and the battery on your device, much like the, the diode between the, the solar panel and the battery. <clears throat> so then your next connection is that you want to solder a, um, a positive lead between the, um, the negative end of your, your second diode and the input on a 5 volt regulator. Now what the 5 volt regulator will do is that it will take the uh, the nine volt input of your battery and ramp it down to five volts so that it will successfully charge your uh, device through USB. Because if it's greater than nine volts, I mean if it's greater than five volts, um, or greater than what the device is rated, it will actually destroy the device. So that's not what you want. So what you need is a five volt regulator to uh, make sure that your device it, it uh, its, its charge is maintained safely at five volts. So then your next positive connection is uh, connect the positive lead of your um, your female USB to the output uh, prong on your 5 volt regulator. Then moving to the negative side of our uh, circuit, what you, what you do is you connect the, uh, the negative lead of your solar panel to the, the negative lead of your 9 volt battery. Um, you want to connect an additional negative lead to that solder joint, um, connecting that to the, uh, the ground prong, that is the center prong, on your 5 volt regulator. You want to connect an additional negative lead from that ground prong to uh, your switch, and connect the negative lead of your USB to the other end of that switch. Now you really need a switch um, in your system because if, if it does not have a switch, then it will continually discharge the battery and basically drain it. So you want to conserve the charge on your battery and put a switch in the system. Now it's also critical that you cover all of your solder joints with electrical tape or heat shrink tubing or whatever you have uh, to make sure that um, the, the system is not discharged by the, um, the metal Altoids tin. Because, um, yeah, if, if any part of the soldering touches the, uh, the tin, it'll discharge and your system won't work. 
So that's it's also critical to put like a, a cardboard slip under under the system in the tin or, or whatever you have that that blocks that current. So now closing it up and um, I'll show you how it works. So you have the solar panel, you have an iPod. Um, it's off right now, but when I when I plug it in and I turn it on, see the light goes on and there you go. You can see. You can see the battery icon has the uh, the flashing lightning bolt, meaning it's charging. So it's successful. Successfully charging. So as you can see, if I turn off the switch, um, it'll stop charging. It'll conserve power. If I turn it back on, it'll start charging again. So it'll also work with a cell phone or any anything that can really be charged off a USB. So I plug in the USB. And I connect it to my phone. And uh, there we go. You have a charge. You can see the charging icon up in the upper right corner. So there you go. In all, this is um, pretty inexpensive to make. I mean, a, an Altoids tin is pretty inexpensive. Um, the only the only components that you really need are a solar panel that can be found at a Radio Shack or online. You need two diodes, you need a 5 volt regulator, you need a switch, um, rechargeable 9 volt battery, you need a battery connector like the soft uh, 9 volt battery connector snap-on, and you need a uh, the female end of a of a USB. Uh, that can be that can be found by basically uh, I got it from this, it's it's a um, it's a thing. It's basically a USB splitter that'll uh, split a uh, USB input, usually from like a computer or something, into into like two female USB ends. Basically, cut off one of those, and uh, conveniently, there's there's a negative and positive lead inside. So this this was about like three dollars. So it's 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 really inexpensive to make. So essentially, if you have the problem like mine, where you listen to your iPod all the time, and uh, the it'll run out of battery power at usually an inconvenient time. You have a battery backup that's very convenient and uh, pocket-sized. Um, I saw one of these on the shelf at uh, Radio Shack, like a professionally made one. It's it's ridiculous how much they caught they charge for them. It's like seventy dollars. You can make one for really really inexpensive. So uh, just to show you, um, you can see the the screen on my multimeter. Uh, it's successfully giving out a 5-volt um, charge. It's about uh, it's giving me a 4.98 readout, which is good. So again, showing the, the regulator working. <clears throat> so there you go. Pocket-sized uh, power source for your iPod or cell phone or whatever you need. Um, basically, solar panels work really well and intense direct sunlight so if you leave it on your dashboard or something it you know in your car or whatever it'll it'll charge so there you go